God, I start. Gentle ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I was supposed to speak for five to ten minutes and start my presentation. And I'll be an expert if you give me, I told you, 45 minutes. They've given me only 25 minutes. So I'll go very quickly on my presentation. It, it should be 45 minutes. That's why I'm canceling my speech, directly going to my uh, presentation. I look at it differently. I always have a presentation, a signature, slides that you see everywhere I go, five, six of them. You think that it's a repeated one. It, it has to be there because this is what UAE has endeavored, tried the best to reach what we have reached today. So I have to put this signature, and then we'll go into some details. Sometimes they're very interesting, sometimes they're boring. It mixes up together. At the end, you get a very nice, moderate presentation. I try to move now, if it's possible. So when you talk about uh, any topic, any topic, the first thing that comes into mind is human capital. Because whatever we do in this world, any services we give, anything we produce, anything we educate, it's always the focus is one human being. One, I'm talking beings in general, which is the human being. So we, we should take care of it before we go into our endeavors and our trials and our every step of our development the human capital should be the main goal and the main focus. So, it is the capacity building. And what, why we have become today what we are as UAE? Because our leaders say, this is what has convinced us to direct all our resources to building the individual. So the word under individual is very important. That's why we care about the individual in all senses. In, you talk about education, in terms of innovation, in terms of uh, creativity, in terms of uh, producti pro 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 productivity, and all these together. And again, wealth is not money. Wealth lies in men. Of course, Allah Rahma, this was the uh, Sheikh Zaid. He, has the, he had that vision to make sure that people are served. And then, Truly said also, the Federation of the United Arab Emirates has relied and will continue to rely on the rich and diverse contribution of its true wealth. And what's the true wealth? It's always people. And of course, Allah Rahma, our second president of the UAE, Sheikh Khalifa. And then a true visionary leader said something. said, if we invest correctly today, then after 50 years, we'll be celebrating when we export the last barrel of oil. What does that mean? One day, the oil will be depleted. If you don't diverse our economy, if you don't diverse our, uh, our production, we don't diverse our all resources, then no way we can reach that time. We'll be happy means that we have other sources, resources to make it happen. His Highness, the President of UAE, and again, it's no place for those who lack science and knowledge. So if you put those together, it works. And of course, a true leader again says that we seek to make people happy. It's everywhere you go, make sure that our services are to the people. And making people happy will be our objective and mission until it becomes a permanent and deep-rooted reality and then the positive leader does not succumb to circumstances. He or she makes the best out of them in order to build a new future for the people. Of course, His Highness Muhammad bin Rashid, he also said that impossibility is not in my dictionary. He also said that I don't accept anything but to be number one. And then, then you go into my vision of the future of UAE, to achieve a long-term sustainable, number one prosperous and productive lifestyle after oil. So at the end, what you like to do to continue to make sure that we are sustainable, and of course, these have some requirements. The requirements are to really look at quality education, quality and only quality, then research and business development. We underline the business. People talk about R&D. I talk about R&BD. 
And then, of course, on innovation, innovation, incubation, and entrepreneurship. Besides having a really strong ICT infrastructure, and UAE has always been one of the top in the world in uh, ICT infrastructure. So what's the goal behind this? And this is my motto in the country, which is made in UAE so globally. So our goal is made in UAE so globally. This is where we look at diversity, diversifying our resources in order to become number one in the world. And by the way, there's a uh, vision that 1971, uh, sorry, 2071, 1971, that, okay, it's a, uh, 2071, we will be leading the world actually in many sectors. And then, I just look at, you know, when you look, it's very important to understand what is it that our leaders are doing. His Highness Muhammad Rai says, an easy life does not make men, nor does it build nation. Challenges make men. Of course, men is a word used for men and women. So you have to just look at that. Again, the race for excellence has no finish line. Always you look for a peak. There's always another peak coming after when you come there. So you come first. Again, you need to look at other, other uh, opportunities. Simplicity starts in the heart, away from negativity and pessimism. You don't have to be pessimistic at all. Always be positive. Positive means no, impossible. A true leader is one who creates a favorable environment uh, to bring out the energy and ability of his team. A great leader creates more great leaders and does not reduce institution to a single person. Once it depends on a single person, that is uh, uh, prone to failure, actually. And change or you will be changed. Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid said that, his highness. Either change or you can step aside, we give it to somebody else. Now, this is a very quick, I'll not, I'll not go by it, this is history, but what I'm trying to say it started with telephone and then became wireless and after wireless became discrete, became digital, it became, uh, the satellite communications came in, optical communications, and at the end, internet started, and this is the new era of IT, internet, and then internet age, world internet working, 1990s, you go information age, uh, data manipulation, knowledge age, smart cities, fourth industrial revolu revolu revolution, and at the end, cognitive digital age, where AI becomes CI, cognitive intelligence. By the way, one of my friends, he told, I don't believe that AI means artificial intelligence. It means augmented intelligence, and I agree with, with him. And this is true. So if you look at the elements of the fourth industrial revolution, we can see all these are a very ma main foundation of the fourth industrial revolution, because we are here, the fourth one. So if you look at robotics, look at uh, IP version 6, which is uh, already there, Internet of Things, and then you go into big data. We'll go into small data later, but right now they call it big data. Then we have the virtual reality, augmented reality, and the metaverse. Blockchain, we look at nanotechnology or biotechnology and nanotechnology, where nano NEMS come into being, nanoelectromechanical systems, and then you go into cloud computing, and the last but not the least, 3D printing. But this is not all. This is a part of the 5G was serving all of it, and 6G is coming soon. Without 5G, none of them would work. It's 5G is the one that's building all these things, the speed, is the latency, and everything on. And then, of course, without cybersecurity, in the future, health will be monitored and treated wirelessly. If you don't protect the body, then you will kill the body. So cybersecurity is the main thing, and that was one of the main issues of the 5G delaying because of cybersecurity and other things. Of course, we go into AI. AI is the backbone of everything now. And one thing we, we have to make sure, nowadays we're talking about sustainability. This is not enough. One more thing is coming, which is green economy. Whatever we do in our endeavors, we have to make sure that the green economy is still there and will remain there so that we'll be sustainable. That's what COP28 is, is a actually uh, hosted by UAE in Dubai. Now, we, our strategy for innovation started 2014. I'll talk quickly about it. It's about uh, transportation. It's about health. Uh, it's about uh, education. It's about 
water resources, it's about renewable energy, it's about space, and it's about technology. So these are the seven, but not limited, that we are going to look at for the future, from now and the future in the UAE. Let's look at, it's one of the definitions, so don't take it as a, the only definition. The definition of AI is the capability of functional unit to perform functions that are generally associated with human intelligence, specifically in reasoning and learning. So it's, it's not cognitive as much as reasoning and learning only. If you look at UAE's strategy, AI strategy, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid said we want the UAE to become one of the world's most prepared country for artificial intelligence. So, you know, once this, this saying is perpetuated, it becomes perpetual once it's said. Once Sheikh Mohammed says, that means there's a job to do, there's a work to do, there's a task we need to do to make sure that this happens. And this is, this is I've taken from the ministry, so it's their presentation, talking about fourth industrial. Of course, they're not put all those elements. I've put the elements there. But these are all the things that are for fourth, fourth industrial revolution. However, these are also part of the artificial intelligence. It's the same requirement. So that's why artificial intelligence is the main backbone. AI is at the core of the fourth industrial revolution, as I said earlier, okay? UAE, uh, UAE uh, uh, AI strategy, of course, the sources from Sumayya Al-Hajri, head of governance and data in the UAE office. Uh, you know, this is the history. We start with e-government 2001, then M-government, then smart government. Even before that, 2012, it was smart education we started. And I was leading in that. I was the one that we were started the smart education in UAE. And then 2017, AI strategy launched. Well, you know, why UAE is ready? Because the ability of unique and diversified data sets, you know, every, the ability to develop AI technology in vital sectors, specifically they start always with government. The most successful countries which started with government became successful. If you start private sector, government is always lagging behind. So you need to make sure that uh, the government is ahead of the private sector. And this is a strategy, very quickly I'll go to it because I don't have time. Uh, the execution of AI strategy is implemented through eight main strategic objectives with three main pillars. One of them is building a solid base, adopting artificial intelligence initiatives and activities, and the third is pioneering the sector globally. So, the first stage, which is building a solid base, it ensures strong governance and then provide data and support and first session to, to make, become a test bed of AI, AI in the country. We are already a test bed and a hub also. Bring world leading research capability, which is being done here, and attract and train talents. We have many uh, uh, competitions. Adopting artificial intelligence initiatives and activities, adopt AI across the government. You see, start government, de develop a fertile ecosystem for AI and increase the UAE competitive assets. And of course, the top is pioneering sector globally, so you want to actually build a reputation as an AI destination. Once we do that, we will be a hub. Of course, ethics are very important, and people have talked a lot about AI, they may control the world, and all these things that they say, at the end, uh, these, I don't believe in them, but ethics are important, so that to deal well with the human beings. So we look at fairness, this should be all built in the AI system. Accountability, transparency, re reliability, human rights, integrity, explainability, and then you go human values, maintainability, man privacy, security, and safety. These are all the ethics that should be there. Sometimes it's biased by the programmer, actually. You want to make sure it's not biased. Now, this I have to go very quickly. I have the source down, you can't see it. But I'll not go to these uh, facts because anything you predict the future, it doubles, by the way, especially now. If you say 126 in 20, $126 billion in 2025, it will be 250 in 2025. Believe me, things are moving very fast. Now, the applications, AI 
could be in e-commerce, like personalized shopping. You have seen it becoming more uh, intelligent, AI-powered assistance. And now the assistant will help you to, to reach wherever you want, even if you want to buy something in e-commerce, and then fraud prevention. These are all very important for the user. And then you go to second, in education. And I'm in education, I know what we are doing. We are looking at blended learning, we're looking at smart education, we're looking at disruptive education. All these are part of this education. And then personalized education. So these are all used, actually, in universities, uh, creating smart content and voice assistance and so on. And at the end, the personalized learning. In the future, if I have time, I'll talk about it in two, three minutes, about personalized. And again, you go into lifestyle, autonomous vehicles, spam filters, facial recognition. These are all part of the recommendation system. So it actually it understands you and recommends. So anytime you talk to somebody, and if the phone is on, the Google will know what you want. And next day, you see a nice message coming to you. Do you want to buy this? What are the applications again? It's like navigation. And I'm in, in robotics, we have seen a lot in robotics. Everything is done. It's preciseness, and it is speed, mainly. So that's what the robots or AI do. Again, we look at human resources. You know, help uh, uh, people of determination, many other things they do. Uh, in healthcare, we have a lot in healthcare. Most of the devices are used in the world are actually based on, based on AI. And the future is coming to swallow a capsule to do some diagnosis, and then wirelessly we'll know what's wrong with that person. We can even fix it and treat it also. And of course, in agriculture, it's the same thing now we're looking at. Of course, there's been so many projects to look at the soil, the, the humidity, other things, the richness, all these together, how much it should grow and so on, what it should do. These are all directly data come to the AI to analyze it. Then we have gaming. Gaming, I don't need to talk about it. The kids know more than us all. So actually, AI is playing a very important role. Automobiles, uh, you know that uh, uh, autonomous car will, be, will start soon, and 2025, we'll have a flying taxi in Dubai. 2025, and I don't know if anybody will take it. The first one should be the guinea pig. Let's see what happens. So many things are happening in the auto automobile uh, industry. And then social media. Social media uh, in Instagram, they know what you want. All these are based on AI, the Facebook, the Twitter, and so on. And then in marketing. Again, marketing, we use a lot of uh, AI in marketing to analyze uh, regionally, personally, all this together using AI. And then chatbots, which are smart chatbots, ChatGPT, generative is one of them. Application of in, in finance, we talk now about fintech and so on, and other digital marketing and so on. Uh, astronomy, astronomy also makes an important role of analyzing the data to come in. We couldn't do it without the artificial intelligence because artificial intelligence can also filter out the unnecessary data, the one you want only. And data security, data security should be uh, automated at the same time controlled by a person always. That's very important because it can uh, take over once and for all. So, uh, flow identification, unknown threats, threat prevention, and responding to threats. All these are done by AI. And then, travel and transportation, you all know about the Uber, whatever, they're all done using uh, AI. Heavy goods, transportation, traffic management, and everything, ride sharing, which is like Uber we're talking about, and route planning. So the last but not the least, automotive industry. This started, the beginning of actually fourth industrial revolution started when the, the industry was automated uh, smartly. So it's not just automated smartly by using AI. I mean manufacturing, supply chain management and so on, and, and so on, inspections. 
So, well, what I'm, what I'm trying to tell here is that we shouldn't be afraid of AI coming. They will never control us. We always have the button to stop it. We are, have the control. We, we always one step ahead of the AI. So no matter what happens, there's always a way to stop it if something goes bizarre, 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 sorry. And let's look at education, innovation, and technology. How much time do I have? 10 minutes? So His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Rashid, in his 50 charter, he said that all universities should be economic, innovation, and entrepreneurship free zones. So every university in the country should be. So that's how we started with having innovation, entrepreneurship, free zone, economic free zone in every university. And what we started also in the University of Dubai. So this is what, we, what the leaders want us to do to have something later I'll show you. And if you look at the education system, institution, you see the output. It all depends on academic education, scientific research, community service, continuous learning, innovation, partnership with industry, and partnership with private sector, plus industry and also government. The result is an output. What is the output? First of all, academic degree you get. Secondly, professional certificates, you do it aligning with the academic startups. This is what we are looking at for the vision of His Highness Sheikh Mohammed and his 50th charter, to have startups graduating besides academic degree profit certificates, lifelong learning is a big thing, and then soft skills. This is the whole smart education system that will lead us to the future. You know, when, I, when we look at smart education, it always should be delivered to any student, from any instructor, to anywhere, at any time. Of course, by any means, and at the end, the ICT infrastructure should be solid um, and secured also and reliable. If this is there, then what happens? It's personalized learning at the end. And these are details of IoT is being used, uh, augmented reality, virtual reality, blockchain, robotics, uh, big data, artificial intelligence, and so on nanotechnology and biotechnology, 3D printing, and so on. These are part of the education system nowadays. And of course, no worry of big data anymore. So I'll go quickly to, through this. Technology should be used as an innovation tool and not the main goal, because we like to have students to uh, fulfill their needs of technology, so we're using it as a tools to attract the students to learn. And adaptive curricula, in the future, the curriculum will change. You don't have to have somebody at the back of you saying, why are you not doing what you had yesterday? I said, well, it's, now it's adaptive. So adaptive curriculum will be there because of market change. Innovative faculty, no rote learning anymore. And, and then research-oriented lear uh, learning, team and collaborative working habits, and inquisitive minds entrepreneurship, and at the end, create an environment of love to learn, L to L. Once you create an environment of love to learn, the students will learn. And the only way to do it is through the heart, which is the technology. So, that's, it's a uh, commercial break. University of Dubai, we have uh, three schools. We have some research centers, Hanbarash Space Center, Research Center, we have the Dubai Electronic Security Center, we have Huawei and so on. Plus, we have other things, entrepreneurship zone also. But one thing I'd like to say about uh, University of Dubai, it's the second in the world and first in the region to have a net zero energy campus. 100% of our electricity comes from solar farm. So we started the project in uh, 14 December 2016, and 2018 project started, the feasibility was there, and 19 it was finished, and 2020, we received the LEED Net Zero Energy Campus. All the energy comes from the solar farm. So the capacity is 1.7 megawatt, plus 0.3 we have on parking becomes 2 megawatt. It's covering uh, the university 100%. We have 15,000 square meters of uh, uh, ground-mounted uh, solar, uh, solar panels. And then 
The percentage of university electricity offset by solar is 100%. Expected internal rate of, this is something I need to tell everybody. If you work on a solar uh, project, you have to make sure that the IRR is there and ours is there. So it is economically feasible. And after five years, since the beginning, we'll have zero cost and zero carbon footprint. And expected payback is five years for us because we're saving every year 1,200,000 1, giving to the DIWA. Now DIWA, not give, we're not giving anymore. I don't know what will be the uh, response. Total project cost was 5.4 million. It's uh, at the end to 6 million. So in five years, we'll actually make it economically feasible. And system design, life is 30 years. CO2 emissions abated to 2,040 tons. Using dry cleaning, we are not using water. We are very sensitive to anything that's got to do with climate change and sustainability. So no water, it's just uh, robotic cleaning. And in 2024 and for 20 years later, energy cost in UD will be zero and carbon footprint will be zero. One of the things also, we don't have batteries. This is how you don't have batteries. What do you do at night? We have access of energy, we feed it to the grid, and at night we give it, they give us back. Even in winter, we have more access than the grid. We feed it and they give us back. So it's really a very clean campus and also a smart campus. So this is the lead zero. We are also working on a project with Mohammed Rashid Space Center to actually using AI to check the number of palm trees <clears throat> and the health of palm trees, depending on this. So all these is part of the uh, project. This is the scope, and then we're using this. I don't know if I... Should I uh, show a video? It takes seven, eight minutes. Okay, good. في العشر سنين الجاية بقيادة حمدان ومكتوم أن الدوائر المحلية تنجز إنجازات
Actually, this project started four, five years ago. It has, it had two rounds. 36 government entities competed, 136 projects, 163 projects, and 25 or 26 of them succeeded. And the taxi of 2025 is one of those projects that succeeded. You will see soon in coming two years, three years, projects that you, it's unbelievable. And it's really 10 years ahead. Regarding the airports, everything is, will be completely different. Like the airport, you just go out, come out from the plane and directly go to the taxi or to the car. Everything will come with you, even the information you need. You are, you need, you, if it, the, they'll know what your requirements, are you a businessman, or are you going as a tourist? It'll give you more information as you go in a tunnel. They call it the, the tunnel of air, the airport. This is one of the things that's happening, and I'm the judge of this uh, competition. So it's one of the most very uh, dared projects, bold projects, that is starting to uh, be fruitful. So, uh, you know, Schwab, he says that we need leaders who are emotionally intelligent and able to model champion cooperative working. They'll coach rather than command. They'll be driven by empathy, not ego. The digital revolution needs a different, more human kind of leadership. And this is what he's talking about, our leaders. Of course, he said in his book, he's from MIT, the future favors the bold. I say the future is what our imagination leads us to, and the future is what we create now, and the imagination of the future is limitless. Thank you very much.